What's going on y'all? The Lippert Ground Control 3.0 leveling system has officially kicked the bucket. That's right. It's I can't even trick it out. Uh, it got arrived at our destination today. It, I had to manually raise the front and lower the front just to depart from Ohio and then coming to New York and when we got here it got about this much before it's like nope I'm done and no matter what I do I cannot trick it out it's done it's it's wised up to Dave's plans to trick it so I've had to essentially manually level where we're at all kinds of ideas going through my brain but let me take you outside and show you what this looks like I would just like to point out that score bunny has survived the trip hanging right there with the keys Good job, Score Bunny. All right, I've got this slide a little way out. So that level jack right there, I am not gonna extend. We're just gonna be a four jack system today. So I went ahead and I got the buckets out. You can see the little rubber grommet cover thing. I just left it out. Thankfully, I didn't have to do a whole lot with the fronts completely retracted. I was pretty much level front to back. Then I started messing with it. So I gotta say these red buckets really come in handy when you're having to manually do this because it takes out a lot of the extra work that Jack has to put in to elevate. And like I said, once again, middle ones I'm not gonna bother with. I've got two batteries for my DeWalt drill and I can charge one while I'm using the other but it's a lot of work. The drill really has to work hard just to get one jack up or down. So if it's if I put all six down and then it's time to go, I'm afraid on the day that it's time to go, I'm gonna wind up wearing out all my batteries and not be able to get the job done. So I'm gonna leave this one up. It should be fine. I mean, there's a lot of RVs out there that only have four. We have a six just because we're a little bit bigger, but we're still fully sitting on our axles. The The axles, the springs, they are all still, they're not on the, off the ground. The RV is completely sitting on them. So that should not be needed. Now I started messing with this one because it was looked like I was a little bit high on the left. So I started raising it. And then I never could quite correct that. It was always just a little bit off. And then I wound up a little bit nose high, but not too bad but I'm going to have to raise it back up nose high to put it back on. So I just said, you know what? We're just gonna live with it just ever so slightly nose high. I think that ought to be okay. So that is the status of the leveling system. I got some other things to talk about, but right now I need to get the rest of the slides out so the family can go in and relax. So let me go finish that up and then we'll chat more in a minute. You barely see me. So I thought we were pretty level and then we went inside and Kaylin opens the uh, her bathroom in the back and the door just flings open and stays open. And I ordered, opened the pantry door and it kind of did the same thing. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> the back end is not very level. So I came over here and I manually adjusted this one with the drill and now we got the back end pretty level. And that actually helped me. I was plus 0.3 towards the front. Now I'm just plus 0.2. Fun, fun, fun. So in one of our vlogs a while back, we went with Ryan and Allie to go look at a 2015 Grand Design uh, reflection. And that one had the exact same electric jacks that we have, but it did not have auto leveling. It had a, a just an electric up and down switch at each of the jacks. And I'm sitting here thinking, genius, I want that right now. So the 200 and some miles we drove today, my mind was just going crazy like, what could I do? How could I potentially remove the auto level from my system and put really six manual switches and then sit there and auto level? They have apps out there like the Level May Pro. I could literally be, I could put like all six switches underneath the front by the fifth wheel and sit there with my phone looking at the Level May Pro and just sit there and manually do all of them and it would be a lot less headache than what I'm going through. Because what's driving me crazy is these they have power. All the jacks are fine. They have electricity to them. None of the jacks have a problem. It's just the computer and its auto leveling portion 
gets dorked up and then it doesn't want to do anything and it wants to ruin our day so i had a lot of ideas i was like what if i had like a a cutout switch where i could just eliminate the auto leveling system and then go fully manual a lot of ideas racing through my brain we'll see where that goes but let's talk for a minute about roads i have had a, a pending fear of the roads in new york because of our friends over at finding our someday who've busted springs blown out tires all on new york roads so we, we went through Ohio, through that area of Pennsylvania today, over by Erie, which is pretty cool. We, we got high enough up, we could see Lake Erie, which is really neat to, it's like looking at an ocean, really. And then up into New York. And so we get into New York and I'm, I'm just, I'm dreading the roads and they're not bad. Now, one of the things we've noticed is it seems like every state you get into, the first 10, 15 miles, the roads are nice and you don't have to really worry about it. And then all of a sudden they, they show their true colors. And it did that a little bit. There was a few bad spots in New York. But it was the worst part was after, it was Interstate 90, from Buffalo to Rochester, they were doing construction and they had a lot of the stretch that was two lanes, both have been paved, good shape. And then all of a sudden we get to this part where it's only the left lane is resurfaced and the right side was like speed bumps. And I'm like, what on earth did they do here? I'm about to be one of those guys everybody hates because I'm about to get in the left lane because it's going to tear up my truck and RV. I mean, I am not kidding. It was 65 miles per hour, and it was as if they had installed speed bumps on the road. We could not figure out what they'd done. And as we're going down, we can kind of see some of the work convoys and where they were working, and then we figured out there's, there's some cracks in the asphalt, and essentially they were cutting that section out and repaving it just it's like a one foot section but the problem is when they did that they took what was a tiny little crack that honestly we were driving over at 65 and that little crack was not a big deal now their fix it was like a speed bump just blew my mind it's like I, did y'all hire a bunch of people that don't know how to do road construction anymore i I would have made people slow down to 50 or 55. I was going 55 over those things and it still was like, ouch, 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 ouch. Just ridiculous. So yeah, once we got past that and we got to just the road where they probably want to do the work, we're like, leave it alone. <laughs> this road is not bad. These little cracks here and there, almost zero effect at 65. I don't know what their driving force is there. And again, as I, I had a rant the other day about toll roads, this is a toll road. So they're taking our money and going out there and building speed pumps. Ridiculous. New York is uh, already painting out to be kind of the, the fear that I had thought it would be. Uh, there are other factors too, like there's signs everywhere about their laws. Uh, for instance, when you pull into the rest area, it says it's a New York state law that you may not leave a diesel engine running in idle. So we're like, well, we leave the dog in the truck when we go in. We're, we're blessed that today the weather's cool, so we didn't need to worry about it. Crack the window, let some air blow through so she can breathe, and we didn't need to leave it running. But on a hot day, what are we supposed to do? I'm sure if we left a dog in there and went inside and then didn't leave the engine running it was hot out then somebody else would have other kind of problems but if we leave the engine running we're breaking another law and they fine i think it said 500 dollars. and then we pulled in here to this koa and they've got signs up new york state law there must be two people at the swimming pool two adults at the swimming pool one of them must be up and one is allowed to be in the water good grief new york <laughs> you gotta define everything don't you and it, no, no one under 18 may be swimming alone in the water. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of these states where they have to regulate everything you do. Uh, it reminds me back a couple years ago when I think it was New York City decided that it was illegal for you to have a large soda. And all the pizza places could not deliver you a two liter of soda because it became illegal. Because the state knows what's right for you. 
yeah this man i'm sorry we're going really off the the deep end in rants today has been rough this leveling system was very rough on me i didn't get a lot of sleep last night i was tired to begin with so when i had to start dealing with the leveling system i was not happy i definitely uh smacked the door with my fist and i had to stop was like don't don't break your rv i prayed about it god did not deliver me from the problem he did however bring me the neighbor hillis awesome gentleman came over started asking me questions started crawling around underneath the rv with me and, and chatting and he calmed me down so whereas god did not deliver me from the problem of the leveling system he delivered me someone to help me calm down so that i could be at peace in spite of my transgressions now in spite of my problems yeah you, God can't take away all your problems. That's not how it works. Sometimes what we need is we need the strength to get through them. And now I've got Tanya who's trained up on the leveling system and she wants, when we get to Maine, she wants us to start tearing apart the underbelly and tracing out all the wires and figure out where the problem is with this auto level. So that might be uh, what happens. Of course, it'll be me that's on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but she's willing to be right there with me with the manuals open going over stuff so we shall see I, I had a thought I had a thought I went in and I got the furnace blasting I was like is it possible that cold weather affects this because the problem really started showing itself when it was Thanksgiving Thanksgiving ish time last winter and it was cold out so it seems like now that I'm starting to think about it, maybe the cold weather affects it. So I just now, after I originally showed you what I did with the levels, I'm talking with my hands, you can't even see them. <laughs> the errors were gone. And I was like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Let's try auto level. But, and I had the furnace blasting, trying to heat up the underbelly, just thinking maybe if we warm up the auto leveling system, it will work right. Maybe? No. It's still tripped pretty much right as soon as I got it started. So, all right. Well, thank you all so much for watching our daily vlog. Uh, I thought today might have been the end. I thought I was so tired this morning and dealing with this level. I, I, was, I was ready to quit this, at least the vlog. I thought, keep going, keep going it's tough for people to keep up with doing these videos every day and if I can make it through and say that I did that at least I did something right <laughs> I did something right not necessarily that I did it right but I did it <laughs> all right thank y'all so much for watching remember that life happens even equipment failure don't let it stop you stay fresh cheese bags <laughs>